Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Saturday and happy start to the weekend out there. Hopefully we're having a wonderful start to the day or afternoon, depending on when you're watching this and crazy to believe, but it's already just about the middle of September here. Uh, and the tropics are um, kind of iffy, depending on where you're at. Some places we do have some big stories to talk about. Other places, it's a lot more quiet than maybe you would expect this time of year, but uh, we will definitely spend some time on that, especially off the Southeast coastline where we do have the potential for some tropical uh, or subtropical development here over the next couple of days, and that could directly impact the Carolinas here uh, and even potentially places further inland and up the coast than that here uh, throughout the next week. We do also have a tropical system out into the main development region of the Atlantic to discuss, and on top of all of that, I'm watching for a transition to a stormy pattern here uh, over the next week throughout portions of the West Coast and the Plains, and we'll break all that down for you in today's video. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely do so. Like the video uh, and comment. Let me know where you're watching from and consider sharing it with somebody that you think might find it useful here uh, with this information uh, that you're going to hear. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump on into things as we do have a good bit to discuss. I don't want to take up too much of your weekend. So starting off with satellite imagery, kind of just across the broad Atlantic basin, uh, and for it to be basically peak hurricane season, things are relatively quiet. Now we do have Tropical Storm Gordon now uh, here out over portions of the main development region of the Atlantic. That storm, luckily, uh, it doesn't look to impact really anybody here. Uh, it could become a hurricane, and we'll take a look at some of the models, but overall, uh, right now looks to stay relatively weak uh, and definitely one of those more out to sea tracks. Now, outside of that, in the main development region, uh, there's really not much to talk about. I mean, we've got a couple showers and storms down here to the south of Gordon. Uh, that's not really expected to, uh, excuse me, not expected to develop. In the Caribbean, we've got a couple uh, areas of showers and storms, um, you know, but just not really much. And the Gulf of Mexico is absolutely bone dry right now uh, with nothing uh, to monitor there, which is good because, again, we just had Francine move on through. Uh, so good that it's kind of cleared out the Gulf of Mexico a little bit. Now, where we are watching, however, is this area of kind of storminess off the southeast coastline. That does have the potential to develop. Uh, and I know you're probably looking here and you're thinking, well, what about all this out here? Wouldn't that have a higher chance of developing? Uh, well, actually, again, it's going to be this little area just off the coast of kind of Myrtle Beach in Wilmington that's going to have the highest shot of development over the next week. Now, we go ahead and take a look at the latest uh, outlook from the National Hurricane Center here. And again, Gordon, uh, currently a 45 mile an hour tropical storm, but the only other thing on the map is that area off the Carolina coastline now up to a 50% chance of development within the next week and a 30% chance over the next two days. So throughout this weekend. Uh, so again, we're going to be watching that no matter what we're going to see impacts, but the severity of the impacts could change again, if this gets a name and tries to kind of uh, tighten up enough to become a tropical storm before what would be landfall somewhere into South Carolina or North Carolina. Now, let's quickly talk about Gordon, though, because, again, this is going to be a pretty quick one and an easy one to get over. Uh, so, again, Gordon this morning, and, uh, you know, not the healthiest looking system. You'll take a look here and you'll notice um, the current kind of position of the storm is very different than uh, where the... Um, kind of uh, most thunderstorm activity is with the system. So not the healthiest looking storm we've ever seen. Again, only a, a weak tropical storm currently. Uh, and latest forecast calls for it to actually weaken a little bit over the next couple of days uh, before eventually maybe being able to re-strengthen into a tropical storm uh, by the middle of this coming week. And the latest uh, spaghetti models on this, uh, you're probably wondering, well, where are we looking at here? Well, it's the middle of the ocean. Again, you see no land on this map. So that is definitely the good news here. Uh, not seeing any threat to anybody. And the intensity forecast. Uh, some of our models do try to pick up intensity again during the middle of this week, but now through then this storm looks to kind of be dealing with some dry air and shear. Um, but again, once we get to about Wednesday, Thursday, some of the models try to develop this into a tropical storm again, and even a couple up towards hurricane status, while uh, a big slew of them just kind of kill this off over the next couple of days uh, and never bring it back. But either way, again, not expecting direct impacts with the storm system to anybody, uh, or really probably even indirect impacts outside of some uh, ships having to take a different course out here over the Atlantic. All right, now what will have a higher impact level here, again, is this area to watch off the southeast coastline. And taking a current look at it, you can see, um, again, we've kind of already got this general spin to it. Now there's this big stalled out frontal boundary that this system is kind of forming off of. Uh, and you'll notice again right here, we've got some deep convection firing up kind of near the center of where we have a circulation-ish uh, on the storm right now. Uh, so again, we've seen this uh, set before. These systems like to try to develop along these uh, coastal stationary boundaries. And sure enough, this one's 
trying to do it uh, and already bringing some impacts to the United States in terms of rainfall. Um, but again, not a named system yet. And we'll have to see if it gets that name or not. We're going to take a look at plenty of models here in a moment, so don't worry. Um, but before we do that, uh, I want to kind of actually um, zoom out a little bit and let's uh, take a look at the United States as a whole and then we will zoom back into the southeast uh, and that storm system because oftentimes whenever you look at the big picture and then zoom in it gives you a better idea of kind of what we're looking at and the factors at play here. All right, let's take a look at lower level water vapor. Normally we're looking at the upper level water vapor, which helps us kind of see the jet stream. But I think the lower level is going to be useful here because it kind of really helps to see the stationary front. You see this big area of kind of uh, cloud cover and just higher um, moisture values in here. This is where, again, Francine is kind of parked somewhere in here over Missouri right now. Uh, and it has attached itself to what was a stationary front into the Gulf uh, and actually pulled that stationary front northward here. So you folks in Florida that had a week of nonstop rain, it's been a little bit nicer than that. Again, still some showers and storms for sure, uh, but probably nicer than it was a week ago, uh, all because Francine again lifted that boundary north. That's also why the Gulf of Mexico is clear right now. We have nothing there. But unfortunately, again, that same boundary that can kind of lead to tropical development as it did with Francine uh, is trying to do the same thing over the Carolina coast. So uh, again, that's kind of the synoptic setup here. At the same time, we do have other players on the field, another trough dipping down into the Pacific Northwest. This is one of many I'm watching over the next week. Uh, again, bringing much cooler than average temperatures out west, some mountain snow, uh, and potentially some stormy severe weather as well, which we'll need to watch out for. Uh, another thing I'll note in this map down here, this was a former tropical system, and I'm not quite sure the name of it. I probably should check beforehand, uh, but that was a tropical system in the Pacific, made landfall into Mexico, uh, and is now bringing some uh, water vapor or just some higher chances of rainfall here uh, through portions of Texas and New Mexico. So uh, kind of interesting stuff there, something not a lot of people have talked about, I think, including myself, but um, an interesting kind of uh, thing to watch there. All right, so what does all this mean for current conditions on radar? Well, again, most of the rain we're seeing is over the southeast, where that leftover frontal boundary and leftovers of Francine and that new system trying to develop are, uh, again, definitely seeing some showers this morning through portions of South Carolina, North Carolina, and especially Alabama. It has been raining nonstop there through the Birmingham area. Uh, and we talked about that in yesterday's video due to how Francine kind of stalled out. Uh, the flow has remained consistent here over that region. Uh, thus, we're seeing a lot of the same weather uh, over multiple days in a row here. Now, other than that, that would do some showers up into the Midwest, but uh, nothing we can't deal with. Same story up through the Pacific Northwest, a couple showers, probably even mountain snow showers there through Washington and Idaho this morning, uh, and we'll continue to work on through that region this afternoon. Now, latest uh, watches, warnings, and advisories. We'll go ahead and zoom into the southeast here where, again, things are probably the most active. We have plenty of flood watches up from Alabama, southwest Georgia, up through northeastern Mississippi and south central Tennessee. Even flash flood warnings in effect here uh, through the Birmingham area. Again, like I said, it has been raining nonstop through this area uh, from Florence, Alabama, down through Birmingham. Uh, some other communities here uh, near the Tuscaloosa area, especially off towards the northwest of Tuscaloosa. Uh, Coleman, Alabama, seems a pretty good rainfall. Uh, and thus, again, a lot of these communities under those flash flood warnings or at least flood advisories uh, due to all of that rainfall. Now, outside of that in the southeast, nothing really right now is jumping out saying uh, we have a problem, but uh, I'm sure you know that will probably change depending on what happens with that storm off the coast. Outside of there, again, we've got some fog in some places this morning. Uh, we've got some red flag warnings out west in some areas there in the pink through Wyoming. Also, some winter weather advisories through the Sierra Nevadas here through California. Again, it's getting towards mountain snow season. We're starting to see more and more of these pop up on the map, uh, and you would expect that this time of year, so nothing too out of the ordinary there, but definitely uh, a sign of the changing seasons. All right, so let's take a look here at um, the latest model guidance over the southeast for the next 48 hours and beyond. So we're going to really dive into this potential tropical system, then we'll zoom things out again, uh, take a look at the national stage, and then I'll uh, let you go on this Saturday and enjoy your day. So uh, this afternoon, again, the big story in the southeast is going to be a couple areas. One, this nonstop channel of uh, rainfall we've seen over Alabama and surrounding areas that I just talked about. Also, again, what is trying to get its act together off the Carolina coastline. Uh, and I should mention, this would be Helene if it forms. Uh, so, you know, that could be Tropical Storm Helene. That could be Subtropical Storm Helene. Either way, it would get a name. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move this through this afternoon. Again, more of the same widespread scattered showers and storms through Alabama, uh, much of western Georgia, Tennessee, and northern Mississippi there. Also, the Carolina coastline, specifically Wilmington, Myrtle Beach, uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina, and even back down towards Georgetown, that corridor is going to have the highest chance of rainfall just due to your proximity to this area of low pressure that's trying to form. 
Now, if you're watching from Charlotte, Greenville, Spartanburg, Raleigh, we definitely could see a stray shower or two this afternoon. Um, but I think overall, the forecast has gotten much nicer. You'll notice here these isobars uh, are really kind of kinking down. And I think that area of uh, cold air damming has moved far enough south and east that, uh, again, we're going to see plenty of cloud cover. We're going to see a couple uh, times that we see some drizzle, even maybe even a shower, uh, you know, that moves in and out. But overall, a lot drier than we were probably thinking a couple days ago. So uh, this gets us through this evening. Uh, or let me actually back this up a little bit. College football this afternoon. This is one o'clock Eastern. Uh, again, I'm not sure exactly where all the games are today. I think Alabama is at Wisconsin, so I don't think it's going to be a problem there. Um, but I know we have college game day in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, again, we're going to see areas of showers work on through today. It's not going to be a washout by any means. Uh, you're not going to need the poncho the entire time, but you know, definitely probably a rain jacket nonetheless would be a smart idea uh, for any of these college games, uh, especially if you happen to be going to any games, again, from kind of Georgetown, South Carolina, up the coast through Wilmington, Jacksonville, North Carolina. That's going to be the real trouble spot in the Carolinas this afternoon. Uh, and then we get through this evening, and again, more of the same scattered rain through the coast, plenty of rain still back towards Alabama, relatively dry elsewhere, still cloudy, probably some fog this evening uh, and overnight tonight, but again, a lot nicer than it could have been. Now, we get this into Sunday afternoon, and we're going to do it all again. I think Sunday afternoon, maybe a little bit of a higher chance of rain getting further inland into the Carolinas. Uh, you'll notice here this kind of you know scattered shower area getting a little bit closer towards the I-77 and I-85 corridor compared to what we're going to see today, probably. Um, so definitely watching out for that. Also, that rain back towards Alabama shifts a little bit to the uh, west there. So it moves a little bit more into the Mississippi area, which is going to be good for you folks in Alabama, again, to get a little bit of a break from the rain. Uh, but nonetheless, the big theme, just showers and storms continue to roll on through or continuing to roll on through rather uh, over the next couple of days. Uh, but the bigger storyline, I think, is going to be early next week. So let's take a look at some model guidance here at what could happen here with future Helene uh, should it get that name. So uh, latest GFS, the GFS has definitely been the most um, aggressive of the models so far with this storm system. Uh, and let's take a look at it. So this is getting into this evening and tomorrow morning, Sunday morning. And you'll notice the GFS really develops an area of low pressure here out of this. Uh, noticing we're getting some troughing here just due to that cold air damming. Uh, and that's leading to some difluence and divergence here. And that's uh, kind of helping to converge the wind at the surface, which is making this a little bit of uh, more of a subtropical system than a uh, tropical system. So what I mean by that is uh, the storm's just kind of got a couple of fronts attached to it still. It's still got a warmer side compared to one side. It's developing off of a trough here, uh, and it's not really just developing off the warm waters of the Atlantic. Is that helping? Absolutely it is. Um, but again, kind of a hybrid system. So uh, that doesn't really matter though for us. It's more of just a classification thing. The impacts are going to remain the same here. Heavy rainfall. Uh, and look at this. This is Monday morning on the GFS. We've got a sub 1000 millibar tropical uh, or subtropical system here making landfall uh, into the Myrtle Beach area of South Carolina. And you'll notice uh, this becomes a lot more tropical looking in nature than it currently does. It has a well-defined core here, a well-defined center of heavy rainfall around it. Uh, and the GFS Monday afternoon brings this right into the Carolinas, a very, a very heavy rain. Uh, even some gusty winds out of this tries to work on through. Probably would even see a little bit of coastal surge with a you know storm this low in pressure there through portions of North Carolina and South Carolina. Carolina. Again, this would be Monday, Monday afternoon, works right up into the Charlotte area even by Monday evening, bringing very heavy rainfall and some gusty winds, uh, and then eventually works inland and kind of uh, dies off a little bit, although it would still bring some rain. So obviously that's a concerning look, something we would want to watch for that would bring a flooding threat that would bring, uh, you know, a little bit of a wind and surge threat, but really mainly a flooding threat with a center that compact. Uh, and we take a look at some other models, the European slightly different, but you'll still notice we get this area to try to form. Uh, this is Monday afternoon. Uh, and this is where the models really differ. The GFS developed this, moved it right into South Carolina and North Carolina Monday afternoon. The European again, tries to develop it. We even kind of get an area of closed off low uh, pressure here. You know, so this could be a subtropical storm at this point or tropical depression. Um, uh, but what happens on the European is it just stalls out a little bit longer and then doesn't really uh, move inland until Tuesday afternoon up the coast of North Carolina and then moves up the mid-Atlantic through the Delmarva. Uh, 
uh, as a weak low pressure system. So a uh, different look for sure. We'll take a look at one more model here, the Canadian, uh, more similar to the European, although gets it inland by Monday afternoon and evening, but this time over the outer banks. Uh, and again, a little bit stronger, kind of closer to the GFS, but kind of a middle of the road intensity here between the two models. Uh, but still, nonetheless, that more defined center, uh, stronger winds, heavier rainfall in that center, and then moves it up through the Delmarva uh, and into the mid-Atlantic and northeast. So uh, obviously two different solutions from the models. Let's take a look at some ensembles here. We'll take a look at the European ensembles, uh, and you'll notice... Not a huge signal by any means, but there is still a pretty big spread on where what this could be uh, can move inland. Anywhere from the Outer Banks here through, again, the Myrtle Beach area are in the uh, possibilities, I guess, through the European ensembles. But again, keeps this relatively weak tropical depression or weak tropical storm intensity. The GFS, uh, I know we're looking at a little bit more spaghetti here, uh, but let me actually, let's see what forecast are we on. Okay, this will help a lot if we bring this back a little bit, sorry. Um, yeah, that makes it a little bit easier to see. So um, for the GFS, again, more members probably, or at least higher percentage of the members, but again, a wide area of possible landfalls, anywhere from Charleston up through the Outer Banks of North Carolina uh, could see the center of the storm go through it. Um, and again, a couple GFS members get a little bit stronger, more towards mid-grade tropical storm strength, but uh, again, that even is still a lower possibility than a you know weaker system than that. So um, obviously, it's going to be an important thing to watch here. So another thing we need to know is how much rain are we going to get out of this? Well, uh, the GFS and its ensemble members paint a big bullseye of rainfall here through the Carolina coast from the Outer Banks back down towards Myrtle Beach. Again, half a foot of rain could fall. Uh, three or so inches could fall inland as the storm moves inland. Again, this is now through the next week, through next Saturday. Uh, again, heavy rain over the Carolinas. We take a look at the European and you'll notice just like the operational run, all that rain is shifted towards the east a little bit and more up through the mid-Atlantic. So again, a GFS here, heaviest rain through the Carolinas in Southern Virginia. Um, the European, more of Eastern North Carolina, Eastern Virginia, and up through the Mid-Atlantic has that heavier rainfall outlook. So uh, definitely some differences in the models here that we're watching and something that is going to play a big factor uh, in what exactly we see out of the storm system. But just know heavy rainfall is a concern uh, and potentially some gusty winds and a little bit of coastal flooding and surge, depending on exactly how strong this gets. Um, and not everyone will see that, but some isolated communities that are maybe more prone to it and on that uh, onshore side of the system could see that for sure. So uh, that's the latest on, again, potential Helene. Uh, let's zoom out again and talk about some more things that we've got to worry about over the next week. So uh, our 500 millibar height anomaly map through the next week, the big story is going to be troughing and ridging. It always is, but uh, specifically where that sets up. So we are expecting to see at least one, probably a couple troughs uh, kind of dig down through the West Coast. And while that's happening, still dealing with this big ridge over the east. Uh, and unfortunately, that's one of the reasons why our storm system's getting kind of trapped down here in the southeast is this ridge of high pressure is kind of blocking it uh, from getting an escape route. So again, it can't really get out of here. So therefore, it's kind of meandering along the southeast and it kind of moves up through the mid-Atlantic a little bit and then just kind of stalls out a little bit more from there. So uh, again, we get through this week, that big trough out west, watch it for some storm activity. Uh, by the time we get into Wednesday afternoon here, You'll notice what was Helene uh, is now still just an elongated, excuse me, an elongated area of low pressure uh, here through portions of the Ohio River Valley and through the southeast. Uh, again, still kind of uh, bringing some shower and cooler activity. Uh, but again, another trough digging out west, bringing more stormy activity. Uh, what is in the east stays there throughout the next week, just kind of meanders through the southeast for a while. Uh, and, you know, that, that looks to be the theme for the next 10 days or so. Um, so what does this look like out west? Again, I talked about some stormy weather. Well, this afternoon, expect an uptick in some rain showers again through Texas, uh, specifically West Texas and New Mexico. We could see that. Uh, as that uh, tropical moisture kind of moves northward from that uh, post-tropical system. Um, but by the time we get to Sunday afternoon, look at this widespread rain picking up as that trough digs down through the Four Corners region. Uh, probably even some high elevation mountain snow again through the Sierra Nevadas. Uh, could definitely see that. But nonetheless, definitely a stormy pattern setting up to end the weekend here. Uh, and we move this out through the rest of the week ahead. Uh, it's more of the same. This is Monday afternoon, more storms firing through the Rockies. Uh, some mountain snow by Tuesday afternoon up through yellow stone. Uh, and then here we go Tuesday and Wednesday. Again, some storms try to form off of this trough of low pressure even into the Great Plains. Going to have to watch that for a severe weather threat. Uh, and again, it's going to be rounds of this throughout the week. Another trough moves through more stormy activity by the coming weekend. Uh, you'll notice even that storm threat really picking up here uh, through the Great Plains by about a week or so out from now. 
So again, that's going to be something we want to watch, uh, and uh, definitely you know a uh, a look that we'll you know keep uh, keep on top of here. Um, so what could this look like more nationally over the next week? Well, uh, again, the stormy out west, the southeast, it's going to be rainy as well, just due to that tropical system, um, and that's going to be you know just the common theme here: rain out west, rain in the southeast, the northeast. I haven't been talking a lot about mainly because it's just quite nice. There's not much to talk about. You have this big area of high pressure over you, uh, bringing that sinking motion. Not seeing really any storm activity. Um, uh, and we'll see though, that could change again. Here we go into the kind of Wednesday. Um, uh, should whatever Helene is at this point, try to move far enough northward, we could return rain chances through the Northeast, through Philadelphia, Baltimore, uh, DC, maybe even further north than that, we'll see. Uh, but again, this is Tuesday into Wednesday, uh, Wednesday into Thursday, uh, Thursday into Friday. And again, here we go. This is what I'm talking about later next week. Big time low pressure over uh, the Great Plains could bring some storm systems uh, or some storms, I should say, uh, some uh, squall lines, maybe even a severe weather threat. Uh, as that kind of swings on through here. So that's gonna be something we're watching for sure here over the next seven to 10 days. Um, taking a look at those severe weather ingredients, You'll notice again, it's slowly upticking through this week, through the Great Plains, uh, just kind of staying consistent that way uh, as these uh, troughs kind of swing on multiple at a time. Uh, so again, watching that for sure. Now, um, air mass wise, again, should we get these uh, storm systems to move out west? They could bring some cold fronts within that attempt to get kind of far east. We'll see. Uh, again, it hasn't been terribly muggy. Uh, now, along the Gulf Coast, has been pretty muggy. Um, but outside of that, it's been not terrible for September standards. Uh, but we could even bring that uh, down further uh, should we get uh, some more shots of this uh, dry air to move on through, whether that's from cold air damming or a storm system and high pressure that move through out of the plains. We'll see. Um, but one thing I will mention is it will become a bit more muggy through the east uh, coast, specifically the mid-Atlantic here through this week as that tropical moisture surges northward out of uh, the Atlantic. So watching that. Uh, but overall, the main forecast for the next six to 10 days continues to remain above average in the east with temperatures below average in the west, uh, again, through basically the middle of the month. Besides the southeast, again, if you're in this area of the southeast, uh, probably more average temperatures due to that cloud cover um, and uh, some rainfall expected. Um, but and speaking of that rainfall as well, again, a rainfall forecast well above average precipitation through the Carolinas, Virginia, back through the northern Great Plains. Again, I talked about that stormy pattern out that way. Uh, and then below average precipitation through the Mississippi River Valley uh, and up into the northeast where high pressures really dominated the pattern uh, over the last little bit. So uh, that's all I got for you here on this Saturday. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Again, if you did, like it, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Saturday and I'll see you all tomorrow.